Welcome to this podcast is making me thirsty. The number one destination for Seinfeld fans. This episode 71. Today's guest is an alum of the legendary improv theater, Second City. He's a veteran actor. He's been on so many iconic television shows and films, including the George Carlin show, Lucky Louie, Curb Your Enthusiasm, Wayne's World. And of course, he played Rudy of Rudy's Vintage Clothing in the incredible one hour season five episode of Seinfeld, The Raincoats. Please welcome Mike Haggerty. Mike, thanks for joining. Hey, nice to be here. Thank you. Mike, welcome to the show. And uh, thank your friend, John Kapalos, for, for making it happen. So we appreciate yeah, John and I, John and I go way back together. We worked at uh, Second City together. In fact, we were, we were hired on the same day and, uh, for the touring company. I think way back in uh, 1978. Yeah, so that was a, a while ago. Yeah. Wow. And then both fast forward, you guys are both on season five of Seinfeld. Unbelievable. So, yeah. So, take, so to take us back in 1994, um, the raincoats, right? You were what, a, a good 10 years into your career, you know, Wayne's World, Overboard, Cheers, et cetera. Yeah. How, did, how did the Seinfeld opportunity come about? Tell us a little bit about that. Was there an audition? Uh, yeah, I think if if I memory serves me correctly, I, I was uh, working. It must have been around the fifth season for Seinfeld. Uh, yep. they, they, you know, they were definitely considered a hit by that point. You know, as, as you well know, uh, the first couple of years, you know, not not so much, but they had uh, somehow tapped into something, and uh, and you know, so they were definitely on on the rise uh, in the ratings, and uh, I think it was part of their must see Thursday night lineup. Uh, so that, you know, helped everybody. And, uh, I was working on the George Carlin show and, uh, George Shapiro was also a friend of George's, uh, George Carlin's. Right. And so, you know, I mean, George was, uh, I think Jerry's manager and also George's or not, not manager or maybe agent. I don't know, but somewhere behind the scene type person. And, uh, so I, there was an audition. Uh, I wasn't just offered the role. I do remember going over to their bungalow uh, on the lot and waiting there, you know, to be spoken to after after I had auditioned. I think that Larry David probably just wanted to uh, see if I could talk or not, you know, and uh, <laughs> could handle handle the role. But I, I got the feeling that I that I came highly recommended. And uh, there was uh, Mark Hirschfeld and Meg Lieberman were the casting people mm -hmm. on the show, and I had worked for them in different capacities on on different shows so they were uh, maybe pulling for me too so it wasn't a long comeback tomorrow audition type thing i think i pretty much went in and waited and then was probably told that you know you you know you're going to work nice and you went to work it was an hour long episode so i'm assuming yeah. uh it was it was jam packed with guest stars i mean judge reinhold both sets of parents, um, you know, we talked to Melanie Smith and Lisa Pesci. We're both on that episode with you too. Right. Um, I mean, incredible, incredible episode. We rank at 25 all time. It could even be higher, I think. Um, but um, I'm just curious what it was like on the set, you know, for an hour long shoot and, and things like that. I mean, you were in scenes with, with everyone. You're in scenes with, uh, with uh, Jerry Stiller. You're in scenes with, you know, Kramer, George, the whole, uh, basically everyone. So I'm just curious, you know, what it was like on the set there during shooting and things like that. Well, you know, a lot of the fun, you know, that you have on those sets is the not so much uh, the scenes that you're that you're in, which, you know, which is kind of the work. But uh, it's also, you know, the hanging around while other things are being done. Now, they, they give you a list of of, uh, of scenes and they usually go in alphabetical order, you know, and, and most shows, although Seinfeld, as you know, has a lot of um, small scenes, you know, short, short scenes, you know, the maybe six, seven lines, and then cut to the next scene right. type thing. So I do remember that we were like in the double double al alphabet, you know, for the hour long episode. So there were scenes like, you know, a double A and, uh, uh, you know, double C and whatever. So you went all through 26, at least 26 of them, and then went on, you know, to the, uh, to the, to the alphabet, and you doubled up on it. And, the, you know, the best part was, you know, was just hanging around, there's an awful lot of downtime in between stuff, especially during the week when you're rehearsing this stuff, you know, so, so hanging around with all those character actors and the, and the regular regulars on the show and things like that, 
were, were great, you know, just, just terrific. And a lot of the older actors, and I'm one of them now, but I wasn't then, um, they don't necessarily go back to their, their dressing rooms or where, the, where they can hang out. They'll sort of stay close to the set that they're performing in. So there's not a lot of back and forth and they, they can be there when they decide to rehearse their scene. So, I mean, it was, it was really great. You know, I remember hanging out with Barney Martin and he was just a, you know, really old school and Jerry Stiller, who actually worked at Second City years before I was there. But, you know, we reminisced about a few people that we had in common there. And uh, it was, you know, I mean, just hanging around the quality of the talent on that show, as you know, yeah. it is, was just phenomenal. phenomenal. Sandy Barron, uh, Jack Klompas. Yeah, yeah, Sandy yeah, Joe. yeah, yeah, Her Sandy. Yeah. I mean, they were, they were all around there. Sandy, I don't remember exactly him hanging around all week, but his stuff was pretty isolated, if I remember in the episode. Yeah. He was, uh, he was he, back in Florida, he was back in Florida, you know, so <laughs> he and his wife shot scenes and I wouldn't even be surprised if they shot them remote, you know, so. What uh, was, uh, what was your favorite part of that episode? I'm sure you, you look back finally, it's, it's probably on TV every other night. Um, was it, I mean, your scenes with, with Kramer and George were just. Yeah, they were if, great. I remember doing what was kind of interesting. Kramer. Well, it was kind of interesting. Yeah, I mean, Michael is, you know, an incredible talent. And uh, you, you never know what he's going to do. And, and, and every take is different. Um, so, you know, you you just sort of stand back and you and, and you let Michael do, do what he does. And I remember that Jerry was in one of the scenes that we were, the, he, when they were trying to sell the raincoats, he had no dialogue, but he just was, for some reason, was in the shot uh and you know in the scene it was written in the scene and he may have had some kind of line like you know you know something like yeah oh yeah or something like that but then about halfway through the rehearsal he just turns to the director and says uh why am i here what am oh, why it's uh, it, i don't have to be here for the scene I, i'm not adding anything to it or anything else you know i'm not trying to sell the raincoats i'm just in the scene and they said okay well you know you don't want to be in the scene that's fine i mean so i thought that was kind of interesting because at that point in my career I was still you know would have been disappointed if something was cut you know but uh right. he was he was volunteering to not to be in the scene in order right. to make the scene better yeah, right so yeah was, we, we we hear that a lot the, the unselfishness on set especially when with guest stars that we've talked to um yeah. You know, you mentioned Jerry, you mentioned Larry. Um, what was it like working with Larry? I know you're also on a Curb episode, season one of Curb, the Amco episode, yeah. which is great. Um, maybe you could kind of touch on, uh, you know, working with Larry as far as him kind of maybe on Curb and Seinfeld, the difference or something like that. Or kind of working yeah, with Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, well, Seinfeld was much more structured. I mean, there were lines and scenes and, you know, they, 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 they had a script and writers and, you know, and it was much, much more traditional. Um, Curb sort of threw all that out. I mean, in Curb, you, right. you just simply got an outline. And then if you didn't give Larry what, you know, he wanted for that scene, uh, then you, then he, then he was more or less handed to you and tell you what he has to have. So like the, the, the saying of grace that you, was that, that was all you, or was that like, in the yeah. script, you remember I mean, that. If you can, you know, it give him more than what he uh, asked for. I'm sorry, I should have That's thought right. about. It. I'm not going to take this, but. Uh, if you uh, if you can give him, you know, more than what he had in his outline, then that's great. You know, I mean, that's that's great, and I I, I was happy to say that, you know, that he had an outline. The the the, the, the direction basically was um here's a scene you come in take over the dinner party and uh, you know don't relinquish control to me even though it's his house you know was the idea so i went in there and i just took control of the room and i think i gave him what he wanted if not more and to, <laughs> to answer your question the, the whole catholic grace thing was yeah that was my idea and you know and uh if you notice i don't know if you noticed that when you watch the show but He's having a hard time uh, keeping a straight face during it. And we had <laughs> yeah. done that. We had we had to do that about about ten or twelve times, but he didn't expect somebody to uh, start <laughs> saying, saying grace at his uh, his table. 
Yeah. So was was good. the curb episode more fun for a, a guy like you from Second City versus the the structure of Seinfeld? Even though Larry David kind of had his hand in both. Well, you know, for different reasons. You know, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, improvisation is uh, always a, a bit of a risk. You know, I mean, they, Larry knows what he wants in those scenes. You know, no, he they definitely knew what they wanted. And the sign in the Seinfeld scenes, you know, but and if you give them what they want or give them more than what they want, everybody goes home happy, you know. So for for different reasons, I I enjoyed the uh, the Seinfeld thing, the camaraderie and meeting the people, and, and uh, you know, I was a fan of the show when I got on it, and it's always nice to be on a hit show, and you know, you you know, yeah, it was nice, it was very nice, and I had actually met Jerry. And I'm sure this had nothing to do with the casting or anything because he didn't get, I don't think he got too involved in that. But I'd met him uh, in, in an American Express commercial that he had done. He had done four or five American Express commercials. And I was in a commercial that he had done. We worked on some bit in a supermarket, but the scene that I did or the part that I did was cut out. But when I came on the set, you know, he was, oh, you from the supermarket, you know, that, that sort of thing. So, so we had a, a little bit of a history, you know, but then, you know, and then Julia Louis-Dreyfus also worked at Second City and I directed her in the touring company when she first got there, you know, so, oh, wow. so, you, you know, I, you, you know, some of these people, and like I said, with Jerry Stiller, uh, Jerry was at Second City early on in the early sixties. And so we had that history. So that was that. Yeah. And there's such a, Chicago connection. We've we've talked to a, a number of guests from your buddy Capelos to Pat Finn to Mark DiCarlo yeah. to Anthony Stark. I mean, right, Tony. Uh, Tony yeah, Tony and I worked together on the George Carlin, Carlin, right? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, you guy. you were blessed to work. I mean, you work you're working with George Carlin. You're working with Larry David and Jerry Seinfeld. You worked a bunch of movies with Mike Myers, right? Louis C.K. I mean. Yeah. Incredible career. I mean, it's it's got to be uh, you know rewarding to just kind of be a part of these kind of uh, yeah. Ensembles. You know, it, it is. I mean, it's it is. You know, when when you stop and and not think about it, but I mean, when I sit back and I watch TV, especially from the '90s and the early two uh, thousands, I mean, there's there's uh, I worked with a lot of people. Yeah. You know, I mean, over the years, and and that's great. You know, I mean, and. A, a good sign of something when you're working is when they ask you back, you know? So, <laughs> so that's uh you know, you know, that you, 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 you did your job and they want you back. Yeah. How was, how was the Louis, that Louis show lucky Louis working on that? It was like, almost like a play, right? I mean, was that scripted or was that all? Oh, I, yeah. I, it yeah. was just such a, uh, he was very, I mean, even his newer show, both of his shows are so, I guess, groundbreaking. If you want to say whatever you want to say about him, they were definitely yeah. different Horace and Pete. I mean, what was it like working on the set of, of that show with Louie? I mean, how did he operate? I'm well, they were curious. trying to do two things at once. They were trying to be groundbreaking and retro at the same time. <laughs> yeah, it was like Honeymooners meets... Uh... Uh, I mean, it was it had like a Honeymooners type set. And then, right. You know, and then the language and the situations, you know, were, were, were obviously not uh, something Ralph and Alice would be involved in. <laughs> right, right. But, but uh, they were trying, you know, they were doing both. And I think I think that that Louie learned a lot from that show. You know, that was the weird thing about that one was that I think we did 13 or 12 and, and we did them all before uh, we, we taped them all before they were on the air. You know, I mean, obviously before they were on the air, but they, they, the, the, we, we were done with them. They're all in the can when we had the premiere. Oh, wow. So, you, you know, even if, if you wanted to make some changes or if you learned anything or, or anything from it, there was no way to go back and, and change it because they were already frozen and they were, you know, they, they were done, you know? So I think some shows have a, um, a benefit to not, I'm not saying to take what, what necessarily the critics say, but once it's up on its feet and, and, and you find what you got to do, you can tweak it a bit, you know, right, there, right. Was, there was no way to tweak that show because it was already done. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So how does a second generation Irishman from, South side of Chicago, whose dad's a cop, his mom's a crossing guard. Yeah. Has, has, has he come to Hollywood? Well, you, you've done your homework. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
how did I get there? Uh, well, I, I, you know, I wasn't that great in sports. I was okay, not a bad swimmer. Um, I found when I was in high school that the thing that I did well was uh, the plays. So I did a couple of shows. I was at Marist High School on the far south side, still in the city, but way, way out south. And uh, found myself doing these shows and, you know, getting some good uh, feedback, you know, from the audience. But it was nothing that I was considering to be a career. Uh, and then I, you know, didn't, nobody told me at the time. And I guess they don't tell people out there. I mean, they basically tell you, you know, the, in my situation, they said, well, you can be a fireman or you can be a policeman, one of the, one of the two or a priest. You know? <laughs> but uh, I couldn't do any of that. So, you know, so they, uh, you know, then I was actually driving a meat truck one day and I, had, I, as fate would have it, there was a girl that I used to go out with was walking across the street and I had to hit the brakes and I go, Jesus, Shelly, you know, it was, and she says, Mike, you know, and I said, what are you, where are you going? What are you doing? This is down to the Uni University of Illinois on Halston Street. She says, I'm going to acting class. Yeah. And I said, hey, holy shit. You know, there's an acting class. You can actually <laughs> You can actually pursue this, you know. So then I went home and, you know, there was no internet at the time, but I got some information about the University of Illinois in Chicago and uh, pursued acting there. And I got a degree in uh, in theater from there. And then after that, the logical progression was to go to Second City. I mean, you could see that that's where the jobs were, or that's where people were coming out of. And, um, you know, I enjoyed comedy. And I saw them perform at the university when I was there. And I also ran into Jim Belushi who was taking classes at the University of Illinois. And he liked me and he said, listen, why don't you come over and uh, you know, see if you can get in one of the touring companies. And so I got in the workshops and then I got in, in the touring company. So that, you know, so there I was. And then after that, you know, you, you work your way through the touring company into the resident company and I spent about four years there and then uh off to california but you know you stayed true to your roots and by roots i mean that that chicago accent if you will right like were you, were there any thoughts ever i'm glad you didn't but a lot of people try to shake the accent when they move to hollywood but you, you i'm didn't. told uh, you know accents are funny things i mean i'm told i have a very strong chicago accent and i believe them you know i i do you know i mean I know I, I can see it and I can, you know, but I mean, it's, it's not like I'm talking like, like, you know, the bears, those, those guys, <laughs> right. like, you know, I mean, they're, they're, they're somewhere else. They, they talk somewhere in here, you know, you know, and uh, so I, I know I have a strong Midwestern accent and certainly words come out with it, you know, but I was in Chicago at a good time. I mean, there's a lot of things happening there. You know, I mean, there was a lot of the Steppenwolf theater was just beginning and, and uh, there was a time when everybody would either be a New York actor or or, or a um, California actor, or Los Angeles actor. But then there became this like hybrid uh, cat category, which was the Chicago actor. And I think that there still is the Chicago actor. I mean, you, it's not a bad place to be. It's not a, you know, it's a urban environment. It's got everything going for it that New York does, only less, you know. So it's, uh, you know, and it doesn't cost a fortune to live there. So as Bernie Salins used to say about Second City was, you know, and Chicago was it's a great place to fail. And in order to learn, you really kind of got to fail, you know, and to, and to fail, you don't want to go necessarily broke or starve <laughs> doing that. You know? So I never had to worry about that. Right. No, that, that's uh I mean, so many people came out of there and it looks like you still have connections. With all. I mean, Mike Myers, uh, you know, your three of his movies, I'm assuming there's a second city connection there. Is that accurate or? Yeah. Um, yeah Mike was there. Uh, Mike got there after I had left. Uh, I guess they were still, uh, still talking about me though, you know? Uh, right. So, so, you know, I mean, so, you know, so we had, we had uh, met there and, uh, and uh, and I, we we just did a, a Wayne's World reunion thing. Oh really? Uh, uh, yeah. Well, on, on a podcast actually, you know, was they got a bunch of people together, and uh, Mike said in the in the podcast he said that he put me in uh, uh, Wayne's World because they were looking for somebody who's from Aurora, Illinois, 
and which is outside of Chicago. Right. And he just, uh, you know, and he said, well, Haggerty is the most Chicago guy that I know. So, so they put me in, you know, in that, you know, so amazing. What, yeah. what can you, uh, what can you tell us about, uh, somebody somewhere it's going on right now with the Duplass brothers and, uh, Bridget yeah. Everett. Um, yeah, well, that, that brought me back to Aurora. Yeah. I mean, it was like, you know, they, they, it takes place in Kansas. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Is it? Air, I have. I'm. I'm. Maybe I'm. Is it actually airing yet? I know it's. No, no, no. It, it hasn't, hasn't aired, aired yet. yet right? I think yeah. they're they're shooting for uh, to air it in uh, in January, okay. and they they had to go out to the you know believe it or not outside of Chicago, you only got to go about forty miles outside the city, and you're in farm country. I mean, it's going away. Is it? But, a, what's the premise? Aurora, Aurora still has and DeKalb and that area out there. They, they're still huge, you know, farm country, you know, and then you got corn all the way through Kansas. I mean, it goes on forever. So anyways, uh, the Bridget Everett is the, uh, the person they're building the show around. Right. And uh, she's from Kansas. And I think that the show is going to parallel uh, her life. So I the first it, season anyways, which we've done shot already, uh, takes place in Kansas. And it, uh, Bridget uh, sort of, um, uh, coming to terms with her uh, herself in um, in a Kansas environment, and I I play her father in that. Oh, cool! Yeah, so we shot in Aurora uh, and and uh, Lockport and Joliet and out in that area uh, in Naperville, and you know we lived there for about uh, six weeks, and uh, you know I had a great time. I was able to get into the city, and uh, it was you know forty miles away, but it was a train that ran down there and ran into the city and we, I had a car. So it was great. It was just great. Really good. It's always good to hear that. Yeah. So Mike, I mean, we went through like a million shows, movies you did. I'm always curious from an acting perspective. And since you've been in it for so long, I mean, is, is that more rewarding to work with all these iconic shows or, is it better to have i don't want to like pigeonhole jason alexander just have that kind of one run as a george costanza if you will i mean what what you know going back 30 years what did you want out of this was it one hit show or was it kind of doing what you're doing uh you know i mean i guess when you get started you know you, you want to um uh, you know be a, a, a you know a celebrity or a star i don't know you know i never really was that concern with the celebrity part of it um, just kind of really kind of wanted to do the work. And the truth of the matter is, I mean, you know, if you're a character actor and uh, you know, you might not have the stardom, but you'll, you always have a job or you'll always be working. So, you know, if you think of the work as being the most rewarding thing, then I, I would say that, you know, uh, slow and steady wins the race, you know, but, there's something to be said also about, you know, being a regular on a show and having a several season run. Now I've never had one of those, you know, I mean, I've had most of the shows that I've had, uh, in fact, all of them, I maybe ran for a season or so, mm-hmm. you know, and then uh, didn't come back for a second season or they came back for the, the second season and didn't make it to the third season, you know? So, so, you know, this, if you're smart, you know, the people always say, save your money if you get lucky enough <laughs> to have one of those long runs. But, you know, that's, uh, it all depends upon, you know, what you want. Some people take their money and invest it and uh, don't need or want to be in front of a camera ever again. And mm-hmm. other people are miserable unless they're performing. But I mean, the, to answer your question about the most rewarding aspect of, of being an actor, the absolutely most rewarding is being on stage because that's immediate, you know, but now mm. you don't get necessarily get the money, but it's a great life. I mean, you know, you, you finish work at 11 o'clock at night, you go out and you have with some friends, you have a few drinks, maybe a late dinner, you know, and then you get up and you do the whole thing over again. But, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's a great career if it, if it works out for you. And I've been lucky enough that I haven't had to do anything else. Yeah, you know, so that's uh, you know, I, 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 as they say, I'm comfortable. So right. I'm, and and I, I think I'm happy. So that's an answer. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. No, that's great, man. That's great. 
Um, did you, um, did you actually, did you try out for SNL? It sounded like in that little, what you just said, it sounded no, like did, maybe I, SNL was on your mind at one point or no. No, you know, I, we did a show at the village gate and Al Franken and Tom Davis and, and Laura Michaels came and saw the show. I see. I, I, I sort of live in the moment. I mean, I guess that's what uh, improvisation is, you know, right. and, and uh, I remember one time they came and they, you know, they said like, do you want to go out and get a bite to eat after the show? And I said, yeah, I'm, I'm hungry, you know? And I didn't know that, that, that what, that it may have been a precursor to an audition, you know, or, or an offer. So I went out and, and rather than, uh, than, try to be on or anything else. I just went out and, and joined them for, you know, for a bite to eat. It was kind of quiet, I think, you know, I look, look back on it. And I think that maybe I should have been a little more aggressive, you know, and, and, uh, you know, but I really was very happy with what I was doing. I was performing in New York at the village gate. I wasn't looking for anything that night, but a hamburger. Right. Know? I and, think that's and, great. And, that, that's, and, that, and that's, what, that's what I got, you know, I mean, years later, I mean, I worked with Al, uh, Harold Ramis, put me in one of his movies and uh, that Al was starring in, you know, and uh, Al, and actually uh, uh, Al Franken put me in a movie that he did, I think called One More Saturday Night that was shot in Chicago uh, when, you know, when he was uh, still, I think, working you know, at Saturday Night Live. But, you know, so, you know, and, you know, it's OK, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, it was fine. And would I would I have taken the job? Sure. I mean, if it was offered to me, but it was right. it was never offered to me. Right. What um, I know he wasn't on SNL, but you worked with him, obviously, on Seinfeld. And then uh, the Michael Richards show, talking about short lived show that you were kind of a part of. Was that. Um, yeah. <laughs> how did that was that from your Seinfeld appearance? He asked you to come on or you just knew him from just being in the, in the scene for a while? Or how, well, I did a scene with him in uh, in the. Um, Michael Myers movie, uh, the wow. so I uh, married Axe Murder, yeah, Axe Murder, yeah, yeah, you know? and you know, and we did those scenes at Rudy's, you know, and I think Michael likes to work with people that he's comfortable with, you know, and uh, maybe he was comfortable with me, you know. So when a guest appearance came out, I don't remember if uh, if that was going to lead to something else. I mean, the show wasn't around that long. I think right. I don't know how many episodes aired, not many. Yeah, uh, um, it probably wasn't a good fit for Michael, but you know, but who knows? You know, yeah. I mean, it's it's tough. You know, I mean, it's tough because when you're that iconic and you and you become so uh, associated with with a show, sometimes it's really hard to break out of it. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, so speaking of that, I mean, us obviously big Seinfeld fans. When we when we see you, we think of Seinfeld. Maybe Wayne's World a little bit. But like, what do what do fans out there? We talked to like uh, Patricia Darbo yesterday, and she says, you know, mm. you know, females think of her on soap operas, but you know, men think of her from Seinfeld. So like, what do what do uh, Mike Haggerty fans think of you typically from? Now, Patricia and I worked together on uh, Speed Two, which was uh, you know, I don't know why they didn't make a Speed Three. I can't. <laughs> But we, you know, that was a, a great in the bus. Day, and that was a wonderful prison. We were down in the Caribbean on a on a luxury yacht. You know, oh, she was, and she was on George Carlin too. She mentioned so you had a little. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess but I suppose she probably guest starred on that too. Yeah, yeah, you know, starting to be a long time ago. Um, well, I, what I probably get noticed noticed most for is for Friends, because I was the superintendent on Friends. I did five episodes. Yeah, that show. You know, so that that happens quite a bit, and then the next thing is Seinfeld, I guess, and uh, uh, Overboard. You know, oh, yeah. and yeah, you know, so That's classic. You know, yeah. So, but but I'd say mostly, mostly friends. You know, I mean, because I mean, I I just think that that's running somewhere in the world, like Seinfeld. I mean, you know, I mean, tell you the truth, I mean, Seinfeld and Friends are the only ones that I'm always amazed at when you get a residual. Not that I'm amazed to get a residuals, but I mean, they're, they, they must be running somewhere every minute of the day, both, <laughs> both, both those shows, you know, yeah. and people that were on like shows like uh, the Honeymooners or I Love Lucy, I guess there was no residuals at that time, you know, so they, uh, they didn't get much of anything, but I mean, they're, you know, it get it diminishes over the years, it goes down and down and down, it's not enough to live on by any means. 
but it's nice to you know to have a show that 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 runs and runs and runs yeah were you uh were you at the season five rap party for Seinfeld? I was. Yeah, I was. Was it more fun than the Friends rap party? Uh, I don't know. Friends probably. No, Friends did it. But they they had a one hundredth and show thing that was kind of fun. The, kind the, of fun. The, the Seinfeld, Seinfeld rap was... party for the season five was at the uh, the Planetarium here in uh, in Griffith Park. Yeah, you know, so they they had uh, taken that over. And not not the inside, but I mean it's a beautiful location. I mean, it, you guys that get out here, I mean it's it's well worth checking out and checking out at night because you got a beautiful view of the Los Angeles Basin and you know the Hollywood sign if they light it up, you know. And uh, I mean it's just a, a a beautiful area up there. And so that's how successful they were. I mean they were you know li- literally renting out the planetarium, and it was a pretty pretty high class affair it was great uh it really was yeah and I, I was there for that um, and uh i do remember you know that um on seinfeld one of the things that stuck to me about the episode was that there's a bit with the hand lotion you know yes. and, and where they slip off the that that they found that michael found that on the set you know i mean he was he just uh, sometimes the makeup people come around and they got hand lotion and things like that it was per, some pretty high end hand lotion. So then when he uh, went to <laughs> leave, Fifth Avenue. Yeah, Fifth Avenue. Yeah, yeah, when he when he went to leave the scene, he was, you know, slipping off the door, you know, so that hung in there. Yeah. Stayed stayed in the show. One of those rehearsal jokes that stay in. That's a, anything else like that that uh, from, from any of your scenes that uh, um well, I did I think I mentioned that uh, that he said that he didn't want to be, you know, that he didn't have to be in the scene. Um, right. In that episode, uh, Larry uh, dubbed my voice. I think he liked to do that. I think he uh, thought that he could do anybody's voice. The the, the clothes are out there in uh, in the alley. Yes, they show, they show Rudy uh, putting lighter fluid on the clothes, and then he uh, uh, and then the the voiceover is lousy, moth ridden crap. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's Larry doing that. Yeah, so he, you know, he, I oh, mean, wow. he, he could have had me come in and do it, you know, but uh, I think that, you know, he, he, I got the feeling he fancies himself as somebody that has a pretty good ear and can do voices, you know, like Steinbrenner and different things like that. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's a great, that's a great, I like that tidbit, man, because he does that all the time. He's always the voice, he's always hear his voice. He's the voice in like, oh, yeah, speaker whenever, or whenever air, there's somebody, somebody like oh, that's off stage. Yeah, it's usually you know, him. Yeah, it must be yeah, his I mean, thing. Uh, and you got to remember, I mean, you know, back then, I mean, he was really behind the behind the scenes. I mean, he, he right. had done stand up, but he didn't, you know, I don't know if he, he considered himself a performer. You know, I think it took Curb Your Enthusiasm to get him out, really out, you know, in front of the camera. You know, so. So on the Seinfeld set, I know you mentioned Jerry kind of tapped on, I'm assuming, Tom Sharonis' shoulder, the director, and said, I don't need to be on this. Was Was Larry kind of uh hands-on as a showrunner slash director with Sharonis. Do you remember anything about how the the, the show you know, operated? What I remember is, you know, is that you know, there would be conferences, you know, and Jerry would usually be in on the conferences too. I mean the three of them would sort of get together and, you know, powwow a little bit and then come back. And usually in a situation like that, you know, you, you get the executive producer and the director, they talk and everything else. And then the director comes back and f- filters whatever notes you have to the performers that's just the protocol you know i mean you know i mean it, it you know if you're running short on time and somebody wasn't getting then maybe somebody would speak up but i think the the idea is to sort of uh you know talk to the director and have the director give the notes to the actor and gotcha. it's just, you know there's, there is a hierarchy there and Mike, you mentioned Steinbrenner, so you just got me thinking, you know, Chicago guy like yourself. Yeah. Who, uh, your, is it the 85 Bears? What, what's, your, what's your team? Like, what's your favorite all time? I know you're kind of split between the, the Sox and the Cubs, so huh. I'm curious what your favorite team or athlete is from the. From the uh, well, I guess it have to be the, the run the Bulls had in the 90s, you know. I mean, uh, uh, pretty incredible. You know, the Bears, you know, the Bears were also were for 
in the early eighties were also ran, you know, I mean, they were, you know, they, they couldn't just get over the hump. And uh, finally in 85, they got to the Super Bowl. Uh, but the Bulls were just a solid team being, you know, the entire time in the nineties. So, you, you know, I mean, you go on. I was just say the you mentioned the Bears and you did the Bears before. I, I know you're you were um, you worked with George Went too, didn't you? Speaking oh, yeah, of the, yeah. the, Bear, the George, whole Bears, George and I are from uh, pretty much the same neighborhood. You know, <laughs> when, you talk, when you talk about well, and you worked on Cheers. On the, on the now. south side, we yeah. uh, we break it up into parishes. You know, so I I, I went to St. Cadet and and uh, I think he went to I know he went to Christ the King. You know, so they you know the, it's a very you know so. Yeah, so but we were, you know, in in this area they call Beverly Morgan Park on the south side. So we we didn't know each other. George is a couple of years ahead of me, but uh, we know we certainly know each other now. In fact, I'm going to see him on Sunday. Yeah. Oh, nice! That's incredible. Yeah, well, cheers, listen, man. I mean, cl- clearly roots matter, relationships matter, and uh, obviously you've done a fantastic job of that your whole career. And uh, just yeah, well, thanks. I- Hats off to you and just and, and thanks for spending some time with us tonight, Mike. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Mike. Great. Well, thank you guys. And um, um say hello to anybody who knows me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll look for you and there's somebody somewhere coming out. I think that's gonna yeah, be Yeah, and also good there's another uh, as long as we're if we got a second, there's a thing called yeah. uh, Chicago Party Ant, which just got announced yesterday. Uh, it's gonna be on Netflix, an animated show, you know, and um uh, Something to check out. I mean, they're they're going to release it in September, and it's six shows, and uh, I think it's going to be great. You know, I'm not actually they got an order for seventeen, but they're going to release them six at a time. So Chicago it's, it's, Party Ant, Ant, Chicago Party Ant. Yeah, yeah. It's a uh, been a Twitter account uh, the, for a while, and it's uh, written by an actor who used to work at at the Second City, and a, a lot. Of Second City people are and Chicago people are doing the the characters in it, you know. So it's it's it should be a lot of fun. Lori Lori Metcalf plays my wife in this, and and I'm not playing doing all the episodes. I just did one, and hopefully if it gets picked up, I'll come back and do some more. But uh, you know, there's some uh, good people in it. You know, RuPaul oh, yeah. playing a character, and myself and uh, Jill Talley, and a lot of uh, you know Matt Craig is the showrunner on it, and it's you know just uh, I think it's going to be something. I think it's, you know, I, I, I think it's, you know, what I saw when I did this thing, I was so thrilled with it, you know, because I'd never seen uh, an, an animated version of myself. And and I just, had, I, I just had a great, great time. So hopefully it'll be something. Yeah. That's awesome, awesome, man. Yeah. No. Looking forward to it. Well, Thank Chicago you. guys, listen, we, we love you, Chicago guys, man. Yeah, you guys, no, you guys are thanks. salt where, earth, man. where are you guys based? New York, uh, New, we're New York, New Jersey, outside okay. the city. Yeah, suburbs. Good. Good. All right. Well, stay <laughs> safe and, you know, stay healthy. All right. Thank you, Mike. And, uh, All right, Mike. Nice talking to you. you this is awesome, man. Thank you. Right. Bye-bye. Good night. All right. All right. Let me... Uh...